we, we said one of the dilemmas that folks have as far as developing mobile applications, and I, should, I guess I should say more than uh, develop more mobile applications, developing sort of an overall mobile strategy for an organization is that you sort of have to cover a lot of different bases. You have to develop, or you should, or many organizations believe you should, have a presence on iPhone, on Android, and also have a mobile website. So sort of the advantages and disadvantages we put up on the board at the beginning of this class way back in, in August was kind of like, well, the joke's on you because you've got to do them all anyhow, all right? So um, very rarely would it be, you know, very rarely would, would an organization have an Android version of the app and not a iPhone. Now, again, there's certain games that are like that, to be sure, that, that, the, that the company just wants to focus on developing for one platform or another. But if you think about an organization, wanting to have a mobile presence, um, they're more than likely going to have versions on both flat platforms. And in addition, they're liable to have a mobile website. So what do you do? You know, a big organization might have the resources to bring in consultants or have the personnel that can do multiple things. But if you're, for, if you're working for a smaller organization and a small IT department where maybe you don't have a lot of software developers, but you still want to achieve this, what can you do? Well, one of the things you can do is you can use a product called PhoneGap. And beyond PhoneGap, there is PhoneGap Build. All right? Now, PhoneGap allows you to take and work into your Android or iPhone development HTML5 pages. So you can bring them in like a resource, in other words. And then there's extensions that you can do things like access the camera and so on and so forth. I, to be truth be told, I haven't played with that one too much. What I have played with, and what we're going to look at in this class, is PhoneGap Build. PhoneGap Build is real simple to do. All right? You just have to make sure a couple of things. You have to make sure that you have a HTML5 site. It cannot be a PHP site, so that leaves dynamic content out. All right. So in other words, this solution isn't going to work for everyone. The solution won't work for a news site, for example, where you need to keep it up to date, or a weather site, or something like that. But if you were an organization, a restaurant, you want to have a mobile app that maybe shows your menu and directions and things like that, be pretty easy to go and take one or several HTML5 pages and convert it to a mobile app using this, using this mechanism. To do this, you need two accounts online. All right? You can do this all for free, all right? But you need to sign up for two accounts. One of those accounts, strictly speaking, you can get by with just one, but I'm going to talk about the second one as well. You need a phone gap, phone gab, phone gap build account, which is actually an Adobe account. So if you phone gap build was was at some point in time bought by Adobe, so it's an Adobe tool. You also need a GitHub account. GitHub is something that I, I've seen more and more lately. It's a place that you can house open source code. And you can sort of manage change control to it. And you can put your code up there and people can download it and so on. All right. Code on GitHub are stored in what are called repositories. Now, the way PhoneGap works is this, all right? With a free account in PhoneGap, you can build as many open source projects as you'd like. That is, code where you're 
source that's freely available through GitHub, you can build as many of those as you like. You can build one private application that is one where you don't let the code out for the rest of the world. Now, the kind of things we're doing in this class you know, doesn't really involve any top secret proprietary stuff, so you could probably get by just by using the GitHub account and uploading it as, as open source. With the GitHub account, there's going to be two pieces to it. There's going to be a local GitHub running on your machine that you'll need to download and install. And then there's repositories that you post online to GitHub. So let's look at the process of what we're going to do. Sign up for these two accounts. First two things to do. Download GitHub to your local machine. Create a repository. And put your code in it. then publish your repository to GitHub. And lastly, you can then use PhoneGap Build to make mobile apps. I really should have thought in advance how much stuff I was going to write because like there's a lot of space up here and then we get down to where we're writing tiny letters at the bottom. In a perfect world, that's all you need to do. Just put your HTML5 pages in the repository. Again, no PHP, but anything that is understood by HTML5 browsers. HTML5 code, CSS, JavaScript. Pop that in there. Upload it to GitHub, publish it to GitHub, go click on things. I told a class, I think starting at this point, that I was able to do all of this in five minutes. This might take a little longer depending on signing up. I already have accounts for these things, so I won't have to do that. Now, I'm a little bit older and slower, so it might take me a little longer than five minutes, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how long that takes. All right. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download GitHub, sign into my two accounts, and then we'll go and we'll make just a very simple HTML5 application that consists of a page. Again, do keep in mind that this is not the be-all, end-all. You're not going to make award-winning HTML5, uh, I'm sorry, award-winning mobile applications using this. But also remember that HTML5 is very powerful as far as the stuff you can put in it. You can embed video. You can um, embed animation. Um, it is a powerful language. And if you know web stuff, all right, and you have a simple of enough project, this is a solid option for covering all your bases. You make a mobile website, and you take some or all of that and put that available. I'm going to go log into my two accounts here. So it strictly has to be HTML5 and nothing else? Well, a mix of HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, but no server-side code. All right. Now, you certainly can write stuff to talk to a server, all right? And we've talked about things like caching and all that. You can do a little bit more than what I'm going to demonstrate today, but keep in mind what I'm doing today is, is a real uh, is a real basic bare bones thing. You could probably write some sort of Ajax code to run out to the server and ask for things within an HTML5 shell, for example. Although I, I personally have not done that. 
Um, phone gap build. All right, I'm going to sign in. And the question is always what user ID and password I use for these things. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here I am. And we can see some of the stuff that I've done. We do not see some of the stuff I've done in previous semesters. I must have done this. Um, I, I must have done it under another account. I probably have one with my regular email account, too. Well, that's just as well. I'm also going to look for and sign up for, well, I'm going to sign on to GitHub. And log in here, sign up. Let's hope I can remember again the account. Earlier this week, I went in and made sure I reset my passwords to something I would remember today. All right, yay. There we go. All right. So, I'm going to go and... Here's a test repository I created the other day. I'm going to create a new repository, all right, and I'm going to call it Wednesday. And I'm not going to put any license on it, and I'm going to click Create Repository. All right. So I created a repository in GitHub. I'm now going to set this up on my local machine. Um, so I'm going to go and click set up on desktop. It's going to have me download the GitHub on Windows. I'm going to run the install. Where did it show that? If you go back, it has, oh, it was HTTP and SSH. Okay. Yeah, this is two different ways that you can create S secure socket. Not sure what the H stands for. I would think SS is secure socket because secure socket layer is SSL. If that was on a test, I'd give you at least partial credit for that. All right, so I have to log in again. All right, this is logging into my local software. It's one of those things that, like, it seems like, oh, what a pain. i got to do this and do that. But when you end up seeing, like, what it does for you for free, it's kind of like, well, yeah, all right, it's worth taking 15 minutes to log in.
I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a repository. That is a good question. I may have done that wrong. I may have not needed to create it on the web page now that I see this. We'll see what happens next. This isn't like something I do every day, so sometimes the steps get a little fuzzy. Maybe it'll just carry over. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I'm running. Right. All right. I'm going to click here to start a repository. And, well, I'm going to try a new name. Let's try. CISS 268. Create repository. Alright. It went and it created that, and it created some control files there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and there's no unsync changes because I haven't done really anything to, um, to, to change yet. I'm going to go into that folder that it created. Alright, there's my repository that created. So I'm going to create an HTML page in here. Alright? Now, um, your first page needs to be called index.html. So if you have other pages, you can certainly call them other things. And you can put your CSS in. Same thing as like when you create a regular web page. You can create folder structures and all that stuff. I'm going to make life easy on myself, and I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new text document here and I'm going to call it index.html edit with notepad plus plus and I'm going to go and put in my HTML5 code so doc type HTML. HTML. And HTML. Add. Now, of course, if you already have these files, you can just move them in to this folder. I didn't, I guess I could have downloaded something I did for 216 or whatever, but I didn't think of that till now. So 
basic HTML file. I'm going to view it in the browser just to make sure I didn't do anything dumb. All right, looks good to me. All right, so now it's in there. I'm going to go back to GitHub and a new file and it's listed as an uncommitted change. In other words, I made that file but I have not uploaded it. All right. So it knows that there are some changes that I made that I have not uploaded up to the, um, to the GitHub server. So I can go here and I can click the publish repository. All right. This is going to go and it's going to publish it up there. So actually I did not need to make the one called Wednesday up there because I'm, this is most making it. And I'm just going to say test app publish. Please make sure the repository exists and you have permission to write it. I clicked on sync. Let's see. All right. It did not. It created it, but it did not upload that. Um, so let's go and look at what we can do within here. Oh, I have to give a description of the uncommitted change. So add index. There we go. And commit. All right, now I can sync. There we go. Keep in mind if this is used for open source projects, this would allow people to give notes and to synchronize and say what stuff is done. Now, if you look, now it says that there's no local changes. In other words, everything that I've made, every change I've made on my machine is up in GitHub now. So I go and Hit refresh again, and I can look, and there is my repository. And my repository contains that stuff along with the index.html. Add a readme, it has to, to add that. So now there's a README as well. So, after I moved that file in there, the one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to commit it. I thought I had committed it, but you have to give a sort of description when you commit it. And that's what I did not do. And then the button becomes enabled where you can commit it. All right. So now, that's the hardest part of the process. The next part is to go to PhoneGap and to make an application for this. And this is the easy part. All right. Right. I have to connect I have to connect to the GitHub account, right? I have to let make sure that phone gap and GitHub are talking.
there's a place for signing keys. This is especially important if you're doing uh, iOS because you can't create an app without certain keys to sign your app with uh, in iOS. You can do it in Android. I'll go and click Save. All right. Now I can click on Pull from a Git Repository. screen I had to click one more to go and finalize the syncing up of it. Now I go and I get to pick the GitHub repository now that those two are talking. So I pick that. I can supply a tag and alright this app isn't using the latest I can give it a name, and when I'm done, I can click Ready to Build. And it will go, and it will build it. Now, naturally, this isn't particularly an extensive thing. And if you notice, it's trying to build these different things. It's trying to build an, an iOS account, which it cannot because it, I did not supply the key. It did build a Windows app, and it also built a Android app. So I could download this APK, and that's the install file. Or I can go and install it on my device simply by reading that QR code with my phone or any other Android device that's QR enabled. And it will go and it will install it as a native app. What exactly are you saying? It is to, to, to specify who the developer is that made it. So um, it's pretty much like your own signature. It's like a, it's a, yeah, it's like a, a security thing. That way, you, you, know, you know, if you claim, hey, this is a Microsoft whatever, well, if it doesn't have their signing key, then you know that that's, uh, that's not true. Uh, especially with Apple, Apple is much more strict as far as that goes. You know, you have to be to get something on the Apple Store, you have to be a registered Apple developer and so on and so forth. Whereas Android, we do not have the, not as, as um, strict as uh, Apple is for that. All right, so I've connected to the internet. I'm going to go, I'm going to fire up my QR reader. App. If any of you used one of these QR reader apps before, no? What it is, is this is actually a code that embedded in it is a URL. All right? So I can go and take a picture of it. It grabbed it. It takes me right to that web page. So I don't, I don't have to go on my phone and type in this page and all that. And I can click on this, and it's going to download. All right, it finished the download. I can now go to my downloads, and I can install it. Is there a certain application that you have to download for the QR code? 
For the QR reader, yes. Yeah. In, in other words, this is like, this is almost like, a, like in the story of the scanners, you know, to, to scan items with the UPC code. It's the same thing here. You need some software that can read this and interpret it. It's installing it for me. And let me find it here. No, that's not it. It's telling me it did not install that application. My guess would be because of the settings on the phone. It also could be a versioning thing. Maybe this has an, an older version of the app from what it is. Um, but at any rate, Normally, I can, I'll troubleshoot that part of it, of why this doesn't uh, install on the phone. But you should then have the app on your phone, all right, that you could look at. And um, let's look at, let's look at one I did. one I created the other day. That's the one I want. All right. I'll troubleshoot because I'm pretty sure the issue is um, with the phone and not with the build because it did go through and compile and we can see that. All right, what you should give me when you do this for your application is you should give me a link to which page? Oh, this is GitHub. My mistake. From PhoneGap, you would give a link to this page in PhoneGap that has a QR code. Because then you don't have to upload anything to Angel other than the URL. Um, and I should just be able to click on it and view that. The URL is actually when you click on it and you see this page with the QR code okay. and the install. And it has apps, some number, slash builds. 
that will be what, what you go. And if you happen to have a Windows phone, you should be able to do that. If you're a licensed Apple developer, you'd be able to do that too. All right, and can, then you'd have the developer's key and so on. So what I'd like you to do today to, to sort of finish up lecture is to go and try to do everything that I did. Now, granted, I stumbled over a couple steps, so if you have questions or trouble, you know, we can work through them. But essentially, you'll need to create an a, account on PhoneGap, an account on GitHub, download the GitHub app, create a local repository, sync that local repository up there, then use PhoneGap to build, uh, PhoneGap to link to your GitHub account, and then use PhoneGap to build a version of the app. All right? So we'll see you downstairs for that.